welcome to Learn from the Experts, sponsored by the WBOA. And today I have my friend Janine, and we're going to talk about travel. Hi, Janine. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. So what's your full name and the name of your business? I am Janine Queenan, and my business is called Storied Adventures. I like that. Oh, I like thanks. that a lot. So I, my first question is, because mm -hmm. this is something I've thought about, is why should someone go to someone like you, mm -hmm. a travel advisor, would you call travel it? Travel advisor. And rather than go on the internet? Well, you know, the internet is good for research, but it's really come down to information overload for most people, people's time, it's valuable, and they don't want to spend 20 hours researching a trip. So you'd come to me, you go to an expert, and I could direct you um, to things that you're interested in, to places that are nice because the reviews online are not always truthful. Mm -hmm. um, and plus, it's better value. I know special places to go, and I can get you, um, you know, tickets to things or special events and recommend things. That's, <laughs> that's great. Yep. And um, so that's do I have to pay you for this service or is it part of the package? You know, it depends. Um, if you had a really special trip that you were interested in putting together, there would be a cost to it because it would be a lot of work on my part. But there's also opportunity that I am compensated from um, the suppliers. Uh, so it depends on what you were looking for. If it was a really specialized, um, custom curated trip, it would be a cost to that. Right, because I think a lot of people, that's why th they try the internet, mm -hmm. even though it is a lot of work on their part. Right. So what do you feel like is a new upcoming thing in travel? A new upcoming thing? Well, um, one thing, people are really becoming more concerned with sustainable travel mm. and um, opportunities to volunteer and give back while they're away. In fact, the UN has um, named 2017 as the year of sustainable tourism. Wow. Uh, and, and, that's a good, and there's a good reason for that because tourism is the largest um, uh, industry in the world. It's a, um, contributes $6.5 billion to the global economy and wow. one in every 11 people are uh, employed by tourism industry. So of course it's an important thing and it affects local economies, it affects the environment, um, and really it's something we should all kind of be aware of when we start to travel. Right, I, I really never thought of that at all. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that, can you name that say are affecting that people should be aware of? Well, you know, it, it's so much easier to travel now and p places are just becoming overwhelmed. I mean, the perfect example is um, Iceland. You know, a few years ago, hardly anyone went there, but now it's becoming so um, overrun, really, with tourists that the government's considering restricting uh, uh, the, the ability for people to go to some natural places just because it will destroy it. Right. Um, so we're just like loving places to death, really. Right, that's a good way of putting it. Well, back to the volunteer vacation. I did that several years ago, right. and I, it was a real eye opener mm -hmm. to um, get involved with the local people, and right. it was a lot of fun. It well, definitely people say, was. You know, uh, the people who do participate in a volunteer vacation say that their trip um, is more worthwhile, mm -hmm. um, they have a better experience, they feel like it's a more um, um, unique and um, um, authentic experience than just sort of going and seeing all the tourist sites and you really you really start to care about the place more once you meet the people mm -hmm. and then you're concerned with uh, the well-being of it and mm -hmm. sort of the sustainability and the you know the long-term preservation if you really start to, to you know uh, grow some affection for it. Right that's great. So what are some uh, things that you offer? I know you said specialty things but mm -hmm. what are some things that maybe the regular people aren't thinking of? Uh, do you mean it uh, for sustainable or just sure. in general? Um, well, you know, if you wanted to go with your family and do like a taste of volunteering versus... Um, Wait, say that again? Like a taste of volunteering? Oh, a taste of volunteering. A taste okay, of volunteering, sorry, yeah. uh, rather than spending like a month somewhere. And, you know, and to be clear, I'm not talking about staying in a hut with no water or... I mean, you can, you can travel comfortably while still giving back. I mean, you can go yes. to Costa Rica and... Um, help uh, um, you know, do an environmental um, project to help with sea turtles. Or you can go, and with the families, you can still go down to New Orleans and, and volunteer. They're still looking for volunteers to do that, or the national parks and things. So there's a way to do it while still having a regular family vacation and enjoying yourself. It doesn't have to be all or, or nothing. Right. Plus, I think that's great to teach the kids mm -hmm. about giving back at a young age. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, yeah, that's a great lesson for them. And there are some, you know, bigger companies like Sandals. Oh, they, yes. uh, they actually um, have a partnership with local schools 
and you can go while you're staying on a Sandals property and help in the schools or volunteer or, or, um, or donate supplies. So I mean, some of the big companies have added that to their roster of activities, you know, very similar to going windsurfing. You could go and spend the day helping in the school or something like that. Right. Yeah. So what are some, would you help people say they were looking for a cost effective way to do something mm -hmm. different or exciting? Is that something that you would do? And can you name some things that maybe you've helped people with? Sure, I, you know, I do, I do specialize. Um, so I'm a good travels advisor. So I do help people put together volunteer trips or if you're looking to, to give back while you're vac vacationing. But I also specialize in literary travel. So if you wanted to travel based on a favorite book or in the footsteps of a favorite character, I could help you put together something like that. So, yeah. you know, if you, um, you love Outlander, I'd put together a, a trip to Scotland for you or um, I'd put something together to, for Lord of the Rings to New Zealand, that type of thing. But it could be anything. I mean, Jane, you know, the Jane Austen anniversaries this year and so is Sherlock Holmes in, um, in London. So if you were interested in that and you like crime novels, I'd put together a trip for you like that. Wow, so there's a lot. So there's a, using someone like you mm -hmm. can really be beneficial because there's things that I would have never thought of well, if you have a special interest, I mean, you know, if you have wine or culinary or literary or you're interested in history, um, you know, I actually have a colleague who does um, Civil War um, uh, trips for people who are interested in history of the United States. And so there's there, a lot of travel advisors specialize uh, in, for special interest and people come and hire them just for that reason. That's great. You're making me want to go on a trip. Oh, good. <laughs> so good. So if I've been to some of the normal places, mm -hmm. like you know, na some national parks and some islands, right. and I just wanted something a little different, what would you suggest? Well, what is it, can you tell me what you have for a hobby, or do is there anything? I like hiking. You like hiking? Maybe zip How about lining Peru? or something. <gasps> Peru. Although they are restricting access to Mishu Pishu right now okay. uh, because they've had so many people. It's really become oh, a hot location. Yeah. So, um, whereas before you used to, you would be able to travel all around and go in all the different areas. You have to go with a, a licensed tour company now, and they sort of restrict where you get to walk. And I mean, but that makes sense. They want they want to preserve yes. it. Yes. You know. No, it's true because our planet is getting smaller mm -hmm. and smaller, and like you said, there's access. Right. So, but I would have never thought of that that a place like that could get ruined. That's really interesting. Right, right. People trampling on it. Yeah. Right. And they're concerned about the um, the island that was featured in um, Star Wars, which the name is escaping me now. But um, no one had been there forever. But now there's a real there's a strong interest in people visiting. It's the same type of thing. I mean, it will deteriorate quickly if you have a lot of tourists there. And so they're trying they're trying to decide what they should do about um, they about um, letting people access it. Right. 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 And like the infrastructure, mm -hmm. a lot of times. Right. Well, you look at like a Venice, where you have 60,000 Venetians and 20 million visitors. Wow. So you think about that. Trying you know, to like find bathrooms for all those people. Right, right. I mean, wow. and that's really, I mean, it, there's a danger of it just being yeah. being ruined, right? And also uh, pricing out the people who live there. So yes. there'll be no Venetians left because they can't uh, afford it. Right. right. No, that really, this is really interesting. Right. I would have never thought about all of that. Right. Because well, yeah, we have you know, but as consumers, we have the opportunity to really shape how, how things happen because most of the money does leave the local uh, economy and goes with the big companies. Oh. So we as consumers can make a decision when we're traveling if we want to um, shop local, go to a local restaurant, um, find a social enterprise that you might be interested in, or something like that, and spend your dollars there. And also too, you look at the companies you're using. If they if their practices are not what you believe in, then you know, there's another one down the street. Right. right. I find a local tour guide, that type of thing. Right. Yep. Well, thank you so much, Janine. This has been really interesting. Okay. Thank and you. I'm, it's good. I'm going to really think, you know, th differently now as my husband and I plan our next vacation season. Oh, excellent. So, no, thank you. And I'll probably give you a call. Oh, good. <laughs> so, before we close, is there any one last thing? Or I think you, you know, covered I, it. It's I, good. Yeah, I think so too. I think, you know, just um, be aware we have the power as consumers to sort of shape how things happen. And I think we should just keep that in mind when we when we choose how to travel. And, and you know, and if people need help, they should go to a, an expert in. Right. And, and, you know, and use those resources. So give me your full name again and the name of your business. It's Janine Queenan, and I'm Storied Adventures. Storied Adventures. Adventures. 
So if you'd like to know more about a vacation trip or a start is a literary vacation, you can look up Janine Queenan on WBOA.org. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Janine.